Man, for the next few minutes, would you just find a place to pray? Begin to prepare your heart to receive from God tonight. We're asking God that he would visit us in a special way tonight. God, I'm asking that you would open up my heart to receive from you. God, I want to hear from you tonight. I want you to speak to my heart. God, let there not be anything in the way. God, that would distract us, that would prevent us from receiving from you. God, we, we want a manifestation of your presence tonight, of your power. God, I pray that you would open our hearts. God, open our minds, open our ears to hear your word, Jesus. Let me be receptive to your word, God. You're so great. You're so mighty. Would you begin to just tell him how great he is tonight? God, you're the first, you're the last, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, there's nobody like you, none beside you, nobody greater than you, Lord. You're King of kings and Lord of lords. You're almighty, all-powerful. God, you're never-ending. God, your majesty is so great, God, beyond what we can comprehend, Lord. We, we're just so thankful for your presence. We're so thankful for your power. God, I pray that you would anoint the preaching tonight and the teaching, God. I pray that you would, God, use in mighty, mighty, mighty way, Jesus. God, we're asking, Lord, that you would fill this place with your power, Lord, with your love. God, we're praying that hearts would be changed tonight, that minds would be changed, God, that we wouldn't leave the same way that we came in, God, but that we'd be renewed in your, in your power and in your love, God. We worship you tonight. You're great. God, I love you. I love you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. God, I thank you for Calvary. I thank you for your blood that was shed for me. God, so that I could have a new life, God, that I, that I could live eternally with you, Lord. I'm so thankful, God, that I, we were baptized into your name, Jesus. That, God, that you came and died for our sins. Uh, there's nothing greater than your love. There's nothing greater than your love, Jesus. We give you praise tonight. Would you stand with me tonight for this last 30 seconds and just lift up your hands. Begin to clap, clap your hands unto God. Give him a mighty praise. Come on, we could do better than that. God, we worship you. We love you, Jesus. You're so great, God. Ooh, yeah, why don't we praise him just for a little bit right now? Come on, let's let's give him some praise. Let's call on his name together. Church, let's come together right now in prayer. Would you lift your voice? Hallelujah. We love you, God. We praise you, God. Lord, we give you our very best praise right now. Come on, together we're going to praise him. Together we're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Let's be thankful unto him. Bless his name. The Lord is good. Would you give him some praise? Praise him. Amen. According to his excellent greatness. Would you give him some praise tonight? For God has been good to you. God has been good to you. So why don't you praise him right now? We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord in song right now. I'm I want this church tonight, man, this congregation, man, I want us just to give our very best to the Lord, and uh, this could be a service tonight that God speaks to your heart. You never know uh, when God, there's a word that's, that's fitly framed together just for you, and I want to receive it tonight, and, and so worship, of course, we're worshiping God, we're giving Him honor and praise, which He is due, but also we're preparing our hearts and we're preparing our, our minds to receive God's word. And, and so as we lift our hands and as we worship God, we give him praise. God is also going to prepare our hearts. And when the word goes forth, I believe it's going to find a place. It's going to find a lodging place that, that it can grow. And so why don't we do that together right now? Let's be determined that we are going to worship the Lord. Amen. And God is going to have his way in this house and in our lives tonight. One more time. Why don't we do that as we get ready to sing? Lift our hands. Prepare your heart. Give God some praise. Right. 
Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? He won't Oh, He won't I've still got joy in chaos
tonight we're going to take these needs to the lord whatever they may be man a sickness maybe it's it's a spiritual need a physical need emotional need financial need we are we believe that god can do all things man bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the lord will lift up a standard against it and uh there is strength tonight Amen. There is strength here that I believe that God is going to lift up a standard. God's going to lift up a banner over your life tonight. And when the winds come and the waves come, my house is built upon the rock, Christ Jesus. And so whatever your need is today, and if you need prayer, we're going to invite you forward. We're going to lift our hands and we're going to pray in faith together right now for healing and strength. Maybe right now, maybe things are good. But would you just reach over to somebody else? Maybe they're having a need and pray for them if they have a need. Let's pray together right now. Jesus, we come with our needs. We present them to you tonight, God. Every hand that's raised represents a need. And God, we're going to lift our voice. God, we're going to pray for these needs. God, we pray right now healing and strength and deliverance. Jesus' name. Lord, I pray a banner of victory and of hell over your people. Somebody declare it. Somebody believe it with me. Come on. If we agree together, if two agree together on any one thing, it shall be done. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. somebody next to you tonight 
Make them feel welcome. Good to see everyone here in our midweek service. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We have usher. Do we have ushers tonight? We got a, we got an offering bags this time. Not to put it in your pocket. These handsome guys right here. All right, we're gonna give unto the Lord tonight. And uh, as they go, as they take up the offering, guys, you can go ahead and do that. We'll make a few announcements. And just first, um, just want to say. Thank you to everyone that helped with our five-year anniversary service. I'm going to give you a standing ovation all across the congregation. Thank you so much. Tremendous job. Tremendous job. And um, I, I would, uh, if I started naming all the names, I'd probably miss some and be in trouble. Um, but we want to thank everyone that helped putting everything together beautiful job incredible job and we rejoice and uh, also just wanted to on behalf of my my wife and myself thank you for um, the love that you expressed with a gift for us and uh, we are so honored and uh, that you went out of your way to do that thank you so much uh, that's not why we serve but uh, thank you for expressing uh, your love to us in that way so thank you thank you thank you didn't get to read the card kind of i just felt um to move along in that service and what a tremendous service we had on sunday and uh, with brother mark brown god was here god moved god spoke to the heart of this church amen and um and speaking with brother brown you i'm gonna i'll be telling you guys more about this but um just asking him giving me asked for some feedback i just been at, was asking him some questions about where he thought we were as a church and, um and he began to begin to uh express some areas where he feels like this church where we're at if we're going to get to that next level um that the next level is going to is going to come through prayer it's going to come through prayer and we're going to have to take up the mantle of prayer and we're going to have to become a praying church because a praying church is a powerful church. And so we're thankful for what God's done. We're thankful for the five years. Thankful that God has helped us and increased. And we got a, we got a great work. And, and he said, you know, it would be easy for me just to tell you tremendous work, five years. It's incredible. But he says, I want to I wanna help you get to the next level. That in five years from now that, that you won't be at this level still. But it's going to come through prayer. Amen. Dedication to prayer. And so I took up that challenge. And, and for myself, first of all, and uh, I've, of course, I've got to lead since I'm the leader, the, the body follows the head. And, and uh, I took up that, that challenge that 
I'm going to be a man of prayer. Amen. A man of prayer. And uh, I'm going to dedicate myself to that um, for our church for the next season for this church. This next season, it's going to be a season that we're, we're, going, to, we're going to learn how to love prayer again. We're going to get back into that a prayer closet. And we're going to become a church of prayer, people of prayer, ministries of prayer. Amen. And uh, we are going to, I believe, it's going to help us break through. And uh, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time here. So you're going to be hearing more and more about that. But uh, thankful for men that can speak into your life and speak truth into your life. And I always want to be receptive. Man, I, I'm, I'm that kind of, I, I mean, I've been preaching and pastoring a long time, but I feel like a little kid still. I'm like, I, I don't know anything. I just want to learn. I want to learn. And, and uh, I'm open. And so I'm open to feedback. I'm open for somebody to speak truth and speak to my heart. And uh, I, I really believe that God has, has this church right where we need to be. And God says, I got you here. I brought you here. But just wait to see what I'm going to do in the next season. Amen. We rejoice. We had 130 Sunday. Yeah, thank God for that. We broke our record by one. Brother Brown. It's a short one. <laughs> But uh, awesome, awesome time in the Lord. Thank you guys for being here and worshiping and helping us in that service. Had two baptisms on Sunday. Man, exciting, exciting times. Praise the Lord. Brother Jordan is uh, Youth Commission, is that? Yeah. Do you need to, is there anything you need to say about that, make an announcement about that? Yeah. You want to? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't talk before church, so we're we didn't. Right we didn't, we didn't. Uh, but uh, Friday, Friday, um, Friday is the night when we're going to take a group with us. So if you're 12 and older, um, come with us, come with us. Uh, if you have nieces and nephews who want to go as well, um, come with us as well. There's somebody who sponsored um, four um, young people to go. So they donated for four people to go. So we need four extra people to go. And so if you haven't bought your ticket yet, come talk to me. Um, we want to get you there Friday. So um, we're planning on meeting at my house Friday at 530 because last time we got there a little bit late and we couldn't find a seat. So we we're kind of scrambling. But this year we're going to get there a little earlier. So let's go. Let's have a good time in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Young people, get involved. You will not regret this. We went last year. Man, it was a uh, Talk about Holy Ghost party. They were going to, I had left after a while. They were still worshiping. It was like, it's already past my bedtime. It's past 8 o'clock. I'm going. No, it was like 10 o'clock, 10.30. They were still praising and worshiping. And it's, it's an experience. And it's something that you will, uh, it, it'll be life-changing. I'll tell you that. It will be life-changing. Brother Chris Green will be preaching. And if you don't know who that is, you need to go check him out. God, he's mightily used of God. It's actually Brother Mark Brown's best friend. And so he's on that level where he operates in the gifts. And, and so he's going to be ministering. It's going to be phenomenal, phenomenal. So young people, be there. You will enjoy it. Man, this Sunday back in the house of God, let's come with great expectation this Sunday. I really believe God has given me a word for this church. I'm not just saying that just to trick you so you'll be here. All right? Because I know some of you are like, he's just saying that. <laughs> so he'll trick us. But I really feel that God has given me a word for this church, and I, I want to uh, deliver that to the heart of this church, and uh, it, it is, uh, I believe God is going to impart uh, his, his um, direction into our lives for the next season, so this Sunday, I believe in God for that, amen, and God is doing great things, and we want to be right in the middle of whatever God's doing, right in the middle, I don't want to be on the outside looking in, I want to be in the inside, <laughs> I, want to be, I want to be under the spout where the water comes out, they used to say. Amen. Amen. Well, we're glad tonight for our speaker, Sister Rachel Dethridge. Yeah, that's right. Our very own. Oh, I forgot to mention. Forgot to mention too. Kaylee is singing at youth convention, so our, we have a we have our very own uh, singer, whatever they call him over there, uh, worship singer. I'm not sure. I don't know if she's singing every night or when she's singing, but she'll be there singing. So. But Sister Rachel, we love her. We love her spirit. We love her desire for God, passion for God. And uh, we want her to come tonight and just speak what God has laid on her heart.
I'll be quick this time. Hayden, um, the last time I spoke, he's like, Rachel, I didn't know you were going to preach that long. I'm like, okay, I'm so sorry. I think it was like 15 minutes, but okay. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to say um, that I extend a heartfelt um, love and honor to my pastor and first lady. Thank you so much for giving me another opportunity to be used here tonight. I cherish you in this season of growth. And my husband and family, my mom, thank you for here, being here and supporting me. Um, for title purposes here, I named it Embracing God's Power in Hard Times. And I'm going to be speaking from Judges 13, 5. Judges 13, 5. And you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a, as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. And I'm going to go to Judges 14, Judges 14, 5 through 6. As Samson and his parents were going down to Timnah, a young lion attacked Samson near the vineyards of Timnah. At that moment, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it as easily as if it were a young goat. And what I hope to do today is to provide you with encouragement and an opportunity to be vulnerable before God tonight. And you may be seated. So in the book of Judges, the story of Samson, the Israelites once again fall into evil and leading to being oppressed by the Philistines for 40 years. And a man named Manoah and his wife, who were unable to conceive and have a child, were visited by the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord said that you're going to have a son, and his name is to be Samson. Um, so he promised them a son. And his name is to be Samson, and he is to be a Nazarite from birth, and he will begin to deliver Israel from the Philistines. That was Samson's plan from God, was to deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. So Samson is born, and he is blessed by the Lord, and the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord begins to stir within him. So fast forward Many years, Samson is now an adult. He's ready to get married. He's got his eye on a woman, a Philistine woman. Um, and his parents are objecting his wishes because they want him to find a wife from his village, from his own tribe. But Samson, as stubborn as, stubborn as he was, wanted that Philistine woman. He's like, nope, I want her. Get her for me. And so the parents didn't know, though, that they weren't aware that that was all a part of God's plan, was to make an opportunity to work against the Philistines. So as the parents and Samson journey down to Timnah, for some reason they're separated, Samson's separated from his parents, because in the Bible it says that Samson did not tell his parents that he had killed the lion. So the lion attacks Samson, but he defeats the lion with the strength given to him by the Spirit of the Lord. So reading the story, I begin to notice that the spirit of the Lord comes upon Samson every time he was destroy to destroy the enemy. And I was like, okay, you know, like, let me, let me look into this. Uh, so Samson gets his wife, and then there's some controversy here. I know we all know the story of Samson. I'm just trying to get to the, the main points here. So Samson gets his wife, and there's controversy between Samson's father-in-law and Samson. And so it gets to the point where Samson's father-in-law gives his wife to his best man that was at his wedding. So when Samson hears about this, Samson is furious, obviously. If someone gave my husband to another woman, oh, I'd be so upset. Oh, my goodness. I'd be so upset. I would probably do what he did. So what Samson does is he gather, gathers 300 foxes. He ties them in pairs, and he lights the foxtails on fire and sets them loose into these grain fields, right? Destroys everything. And if someone were to destroy my house, I would be so furious, Lord, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't do what they did, obviously, but I would be 
I would be really upset. And when the Philistine know that it's Samson, they level up. They get crazy and they grab his ex-wife and the father and they burn them alive. And so when Samson hears about this, it said that he heard this and Samson killed more Philistines. And I came to, and it came to my mind, why didn't the spirit of the Lord fall upon Samson at that time? Because in the times before, the spirit of the Lord had fallen upon him to defeat his enemies. So I was like, what is going on? Why would the Bible say this? There's always a reason why the Bible and the, and the author writes certain things. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to look into this. What's going on? Why didn't the spirit of the Lord fall upon him? And I know that the Bible is left to each of our own interpretations. So my interpretation of why it didn't fall may not um, co connect or relate to what you had thought. But this is just what I'm thinking. What I had um, come to is the Bible doesn't expli explicitly say why the spirit of the Lord didn't fall upon Samson. But it is possible that Samson's actions and decisions were not aligned with God's will at those times, right? And then I also thought when I, when, I, when I came to that conclusion is when I'm not aligned with God's word or his will, I feel distant. I, I don't feel confident enough. I feel spiritually weak. I become distracted and we all can become distracted by social media. We know how TikTok can just take us into that deep hole at one in the morning just watching dumb stuff. And we don't know where we're at. And we can fill our days with work and work drama and all these things. And there's no devotion. There's no hunger. There's no fire because it, it's, it, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing left. We are out of alignment with the word of God and God's will. And even the attempt to go back to God is more difficult because we already feel distant. We approach him. We need to approach him with honesty. We need to approach him with transparency. And we all know how difficult that can be, but you know what? You need to take that pride and you need to throw it and you be like, God, I come to you humble. I come to you broken once again, God. I'm here to realign myself with your will, your plan, God. Lord, I am pressing past this discomfort, this embarrassment, because I've been embarrassed. I've been embarrassed to come and talk to God. Like if we were strangers, like I've never had an intimate moment with God. Like I've forgotten about those times Like God's forgotten about me. And we need to remember that God did not forget us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have access to the same power, the same spirit that fell upon Samson. And we need, it to, uh, we need to allow it to fall upon us to overcome our situation. And if we're not careful, we can allow the enemy to creep in. And it's creeped in for me. I'm using me as an example right now. This has all happened. There can be confusion. And we pray against that in the name of Jesus because it's easy to be confused when we're talking to other people who aren't also aligned with God. And you messed up today. That's all right. Don't hide in a cave. Don't be distant. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop thanking him. Don't allow the enemy to camp and destroy what God has already bestowed upon you. Have faith and believe in God and in yourself. All right. So this part of Samson's story, it serves as a reminder that even the strongest among us can experience moments of fear and vulnerability. So a man who was all powerful, who was brave, courageous, went to go live in a cave after he went and killed some more Philistines. And while Samson was hiding, the Philistines had set up camp in the, in the city of Judah and began to kill the people of Judah. And so the Philistines were killing the people of Judah and the people of Judah went to the cave because they were desperate. They knew that they had someone there to defeat their enemy. And so I believe when they went up to Samson, Samson got motivated again. You know what? I need to realign myself with God. I, God had a plan for me and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna see it through. And so what did Samson do? He surrendered for the greater good of his people, and he allowed the people of Judah to tie him up and to go take him to the Philistines. And the Bible says, as Samson arrived at Lehi, the Philistines came shouting in triumph, but the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson again. The Spirit came powerfully upon him, and he snapped the ropes on his arms as if they were burnt strands of flax, and they fell from his wrists. Then he found a, the jawbone of a recently killed donkey. He picked it up and killed 1,000 Philistines with it. So he was fulfilling God's plan even then, even after he was in a cave 
cave and he felt vulnerable and he was afraid and he, and he had fear in his might, God still used him at that moment. All right. So if you allow the, the spirit to fall upon you again, there's nothing that can stop you. If God be for you, who can be against you? We are not alone tonight. The scripture says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And I'm talking to somebody, also to myself, who is also in a valley like Samson. A dry valley, you haven't been able to hear the voice of God. You don't have the motivation to pray. And that's me right there. I didn't have motivation to pray. And when you do pray, it's just a dry prayer. Motionless. You don't, you're, not even, you're not even crying. You're sitting there and you're like, God, I need you. But, and then you just give up because you're like, you know what, God, I, I'm not even motivated. I don't, I'm, I'm wasting my time, which is, it seems crazy to even say that. But that's how we think in those moments of the valleys. It's dry. There's no fire. There's no power coming out. But I'm here to tell you as a witness that I just came out of a dry valley and I can testify that if you keep hanging on and you keep pursuing God, you keep pursuing him, God will speak to you. God will give you answers to the prayers that you're asking him. God will heal you. That answer that you have been praying for, God is going to show up and provide you with that answer. Don't let the enemy tell you you're worthless. Good things can't happen to you. No one cares about you. You haven't prayed in a long time. God's forgotten about you. That's a lie from the enemy. And you are equipped with so much power. You need to know just how much power you are equipped with and that God has bestowed upon you. You have power and authority to tread upon serpents, to tread upon the enemy, that trial, that burden. And he can break down strongholds tonight. And I'm speaking life into those dry bones, speaking the word of God into your valley, that there are promises in your valley. And sometimes we are the only ones to speak life to ourselves in our prayer closets. And sometimes we have to rebuke ourselves and be like, God, Lord, I am so sorry, God. Rebuke the thoughts in my mind, God. Lord, renew that fire, God. Renew that commitment to myself, Jesus, to you, God. And sometimes repeating scriptures, again, like I had used when I was scared and I had fear, and I would just keep repeating, yea, though I walk through the valley. Right now, I'm in a valley, God. Lord, you are with me, Jesus. I fear no evil because you did not give me the spirit of fear, God. He is with us. So after Samson had killed 1,000 Philistines, he goes on to be the judge for 20 years and meets Delilah. And I'm not here to talk about the story of Samson and Delilah. I'm just going to talk about the part where she has a man cuts his hair. So a man cuts his hair off and Delilah screams, Samson, the Philistines are here to capture you. And the Bible says that, but he did not realize the Lord had left him. Why did God leave him? Well, the angel of the Lord said he will have rules to follow, things he cannot eat, things he cannot drink, things he cannot touch, things he cannot cut. So you will become pregnant, again, like the first scripture I had uh, said, give birth to a son and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. So God instructed that Samson's hair should never be cut because it was a symbol of of his consecration to God as a Nazarite. Samson's hair was a visible sign of his dedication to God and the source of his strength, which was bestowed upon him by God. So when Delilah betrayed Samson and cut his hair, it symbolized a breach of his Nazarite vow and his consecration to God. And this act led to the departure of the spirit of the Lord from Samson, leaving him vulnerable to his enemies, right? His eyes were were plucked out. They were burned, however, but he became blind. He was vulnerable. So just as Samson's hair symbolizes his consecration to God and the covenant he made as a Nazarite, our covenant with God is based on our commitment to follow and to believe in his word, to live according to his will, and to maintain a relationship with him. So when we break our covenant with God by neglecting our relationship with him, ignoring his word, we risk losing the spiritual strength and guidance, and we ourselves become vulnerable in, from being in communion with him. Just as Samson lost his strength when his hair was cut, we too can be spiritually weakened or distant from God when we fail to honor our covenant with him. And it feels like we're in a dry valley. Samson was also in a dry valley. 
We had lost, he had lost both of his eyes. His strength was removed. His identity was stripped from him. But God had a plan for Samson. Samson didn't do anything to change God's plan. So don't think that you're doing something in your storm and in your trial that is going to surprise God or change his plan for you. It's not. This is part of the plan. This is part of God's plan. He knows exactly what you're going to do in your trial, when you're frustrated, when you're upset and you're angry. You're going to go do some crazy things. God knows that. That's part of the plan. God knows how your season is going to end. And not before long, Samson's hair grows back. And the Nazarite vow is restored. His covenant with God is restored. His commitment and relationship with God is restored. His strength is restored. And most of all, his calling is restored. And his calling again was to defeat the Philistines. And if the musicians can come, I'm I'm coming to a close. And if we can all stand, I'm also getting ready. So Samson, blinded, was brought to a feast in shackles. So the Philistines wanted, to, wanted some amusement and brought Samson here. And so Samson, as he comes into the, the, the feast, he tells the servant to put him in between two pillars so he can rest upon them. The Bible says, then Samson prayed to the Lord, sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. And I believe that is some of our prayers tonight. Lord, remember me again. Strengthen me, God, one more time. And I feel like the spirit of the Lord is getting ready to stir within us tonight. I know it was a short sermon tonight, but God can still move. Because God, because Samson killed more people when he died than when he had during his entire lifetime. And if we come forward and we kill that flesh, we can kill more enemies. We can, we can defeat trials and overcome situations more than we had it when we didn't kill our flesh. We need to die daily and kill more enemies. Just like Samson who was able to repent and regain his strength through God's mercy. We too can return to God rededicate ourselves, seek forgiveness, renew our commitment with him and restore our relationship with him. And if we can just stay faithful and is it okay to be vulnerable tonight? I know I'm, I'm being vulnerable tonight because of the Holy Ghost, but if we can all just be vulnerable to him, we can stay in his presence. God can strengthen us. Scripture says, by faith, these people, which also Samson was a part of him, overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. And I I just want to ask, is someone ready to receive what God has promised them tonight? I would like to encourage you to step out boldly and to come renew covenants. Seek forgiveness. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost tonight, you can receive the Holy Ghost tonight. That is a gift from God. That is a promise given to you that you will be overcome by the Spirit of the Lord. God, remember me again. Strengthen me again, God. One more time, Jesus. Build my faith, God. Turn my weakness into strength, Lord. I'm going to need you to empower me today, God. I can't overcome this situation, Lord. Lord, I can't live in constant fear. I can't live in constant panic, God. You are my source of strength, God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is victory. There is freedom. There is joy. There is deliverance. There is healing. Lord, pour out a fresh spirit upon your people tonight, God.
Hallelujah. If we can pray, I'd like for us to do a special prayer for Sister Gab, Gabby, Brother Tony. If we could pray for them, their children, their family, going through a situation right now, and and um, they need they need God, and they need a a breakthrough in the Holy Ghost for her family. And so I want us to join together, man, and let's pray for them. And if you're not close, me if, if you want to, you can come closer. Or just stretch your hand towards them right now, Brother Tony, and Sister Gabby, and their children. Let's pray for them right now. Let's just pray for Adeline too. God knows what's happening, but we're praying strength over them, protection over them, peace over them. In Jesus' name. That's right, church. Let's join together. There's strength in prayer. Come on, there's strength in prayer. Hallelujah. and under if you're 18 and under single would you come up to the front we just want to pray over our children sometimes we don't know and we don't see the things that they battle and we need to pray a hedge over them because the enemy he if he can get them when they're young trip them up and the world is after them and so we're going to pray over our, our children today. And, and you don't know the things that they battle. Younger, it's to you, things are happening younger, younger, younger that, that we've never seen. It's unprecedented. And so they, we can't wait till they're older to try to pray over them and get them in church and loving God. It's, it's got to happen right now. We've got to take dominion right now. We've got to pray God's spirit over them right now and strength over them right now. So I'm just asking all of us, why don't we just stretch out our hands? If you'd like to come and pray with them that's fine too but we're going to pray over i know not all of them are here tonight but over all of our young people our children jesus in your name god you see the things that they face god at school and at home god in their communities in their minds the things that they battle 
I'm praying right now, God, a hedge over our children, God. I pray against oppression and depression. I pray against the lies of the enemy. I pray against the world. I pray against the pull of the world and the desires of the world that try to trip them and catch them and deceive them. I pray, God, right now. I pray the Holy Ghost. I pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I pray that they'll be strong for you. Strong men, strong women. God, strong boys, strong girls walking in the Holy Ghost. I pray that they'll learn how to pray and worship right now. They'll dedicate themselves right now. That their hearts will be yours right now. Lead them and guide them. Let their footsteps be ordered of the Lord. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. Come on, against the devourer, against the wickedness of this world. It's not going to get to their hearts. Come on, it's not going to get to their hearts. They're going to serve God. Oh, yes. Jesus. Jesus. Holy Ghost is moving right now. Yes, Jesus. You don't know where they're going. You don't know what they battle, even at young, at a young age. But I'm praying God's strength over you. You're going to stand strong. You're going to stand strong. Yes, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Bless your family. Bless your family. Bless your family. Pray blessings over your family. wisdom and knowledge in these days Jesus to lead their family hallelujah yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord Amen. amen I remember uh, some years ago brother Martinez he pastors in fireball that he got a knock at the door and when he opened this door opened the door this man rushed in stranger rushed in into his home and brother Martinez was taken back a little bit but when he figured out what was happening he told me he he got the guy and he pushed him out the door and he shut the door and locked it and I feel tonight that's what we're doing in the spirit realm man we're we're setting some standards we're 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 making a statement that the enemy's not going to just walk in and he's not going to walk into our homes and destroy our homes and our children and our marriages that we're going to push back and we're going to push until we push them out somebody say amen we're going to push until we get victory praise god god's going to give you the wisdom you need for this hour that we're in amen amen we love our families our children and um we love all of you amen isn't god good God is good. Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord? Thank, thank Him for what He's done tonight. On a Tuesday. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you for being here tonight. We'll see y'all Sunday. God bless.